Yes. Camera lady, are you ready? Did yes. you start already? Yeah. Start already? Oh. Slide. Okay, so everyone please. There is something about inverse graph. From what you have done so far, what do you notice about inverse graph? That there are two lines. It doesn't touch zero. It doesn't touch? The x doesn't touch zero. The y. Say that in a better way. It will that's the point. That's the point. It won't touch the x. The y. It won't touch the y axis. And it's the reason it doesn't touch the y axis. When does when does look at this one for example? Y equals one minus two over x squared. There's always a condition. Can you read that? X is never equal to zero. What happens when x is zero? No. What 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 is the value? At what value does it turn to y axis? Zero. Sure. Can you put x equal to zero here and tell me what you get? You get one. You sure? Okay, let's put zero. So we get one minus one minus what? Two divided by. So that's one minus what? Zero. It's an error. It does not exist. It's infinity. Okay, it's, in, it's like trying to work out one minus infinity. Oh. Even that is a negative infinity on its own. So that can be positive. And this is not a number. What? It can be positive. That's why. And this is not a number. Infinity is not a number. It's a concept. Let me try to tell you what infinity means. Look up. Are you ready? Yeah. Bring out your calculator. Let's see. <laughs> please, please. We don't want too much jokes now. We've spent over one hour, I think exactly one hour now, doing work on our own. So this last 30 minutes, please pay attention. Uh, check this, everybody. I want us to figure out the behavior of y as we change the values of x. Are you listening? Uh, let's say we have 5 divided by x. So we're going to start from a big number, and we're going to go to a small number, and we see how this y, what becomes of y. Then you understand what infinity means. Yeah. Let's start with y is equal to x is equal to 10. So I'm going to say x and y. So you have to do substitute. Try 10, try 5, try, uh, let's reduce it to 1. So here you get what? 1. Yo, is this half? 0 0.5? 1. 1. 5. 5. Okay. So I reduce it again to 0 0.5? 10. 10. 10. Joey, can you make sure? Sure. 10. Is it 10? Yes. Okay. How about 0 0.05? 100. Okay. Uh, I reduce it again, maybe 0 0.01. Can you see the number is reducing? You get what? 500. 500. But this is not zero yet, right? Rita, can you see? This is not zero yet. Do you agree? Yeah. Talk to me, everyone. Yeah. Yes. OK. So how about we reduce it again? 5,000. You agree that's 5,000? Yeah. Oh. It's still not zero yet. Anson, I don't need your comment right now. Uh, how about zero point that? What happens to Y? 50,000. Now, this is just three zeros. And I get three zero and one here, right? So if I have a lot of zeros, maybe there are 2019 zeros. What do you think I would get here? 25 and 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 zeros. Do you agree? Yeah. But this is still not zero. Yeah. Oh, has x get to the point of zero yet? No. X hasn't gotten to zero yet. We can only approximate to zero, but we don't want to approximate. This is still not zero. And it's not in any way close to zero because I can write a lot of smaller numbers that are also less than this one. Do you agree? Yeah. And what do you think this number 
gets to? It becomes bigger. bigger and bigger. That is why we say if this number x eventually becomes zero, it's going to be too large for us to imagine. And that is the concept of infinity. Um. So the calculator doesn't know what that large number is. That's why you get an error. It's not a number. It doesn't exist. Okay? It doesn't exist. When somebody tells you, find the value of x for which this fraction does not exist, what does that mean with what I just said now? Find the value of x for which this fraction does not exist. X is 1. When x is 1. So this fraction does not exist when what happens? When, no, 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 no. Before you get x is 1. When this is 0. And this denominator is 0 when x is 1. So it doesn't exist at x is equal to 0, any inverse graph. If, it, if this exists, then there will be a y-intercept. But if x is equal to 0 doesn't give a particular answer, it will never touch the y-axis. <laughs> so that is one important feature of an inverse graph. It doesn't touch the y-axis. Does it make sense? Yes. It can only move close to the y-axis, something like this. So you have x, you have y. The worst that could happen is having something like this. It depends on how the graph is. You can have something like this. It will never touch. It will keep moving close and close as this line extends. It will keep moving close to it. It will never touch it. So if our graphs touch the zero line, it's wrong. wrong. That's why I told you you shouldn't join them. Okay. So for IGCSC, please, 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 I don't have time. Just observe. What you're about to add might be the next thing I want to say, so let me finish. For IGCSC problems, you will have two parts most of the time. That is why even your graph, your table of values, Joey, that's why your table of values also will never, there will be like a gap here. So it's possible you see this separately and you see this separately. Let's see what happens to this particular question. It's none of your questions. It's just another random question that I think we should do together. Please, please, I need your attention. That is lights in this camera. Make your own button. Uh, let's have light, right? Yeah, there's a lamp function, but it's not. Okay, if you can see it, then uh, I, I think I'm okay. Wait, Mr. Daniel, doesn't that mean the line has to always be parallel to the y axis? No, no, it's not it's parallel. parallel. It's, it's forever going to get closer and closer. It's, never never it's not parallel. Please look up now. Okay, so bring out your calculator and tell me the missing values in the table. Okay. Some people start from the first, some people start from the back. The first one is 0 0.92. 0 0.92, so let's, 0 0.92. So let's mark this, make sure you round up, round approximate properly. Next one. The last one is 0 0.92. 0 0.92 also. Okay. And that makes sense because it's square, right? So it's the same thing when they are square. Oh, so really by the way, this is the equation, sorry. It's also below that. Negative what? Two Can you speak louder? X effort. Yeah? Negative, negative one here? Yeah. Confirm that, everybody? Yes. Two divided by four is 0 0.5. How do you get negative really? one? Wait, let me get it. 0 0.5. Let me do it again. Gisella, what did you do? I think I pressed it. But it's negative one is a negative one. This is going to be four. 2 divided by 4 is 0 0.5. 1 minus that. 1, sorry. So 2 is also 0 0.5, right? 1 is negative 1. The other one so is one also is negative 1. 1 is negative 1, and, one, and the other one is also negative one. 1. Like that? Yes. OK, so let's see what happens here. Please quiet, quiet. So for minus 5, can you see my graph? OK, I'll just tell you the values while I plot it. For, for minus 5, it is 0 0.92. So minus 5 is here. 0 0.92 is, let's say, 0 0.9, right? I need everyone's attention. 0 0.9 is close to 1, isn't it? 
So do you agree that will be this point? Do you agree? Yeah. A little lower. So that's like 0 0.95. So, so I just, it doesn't have to be exactly accurate. So let's say something like that. Or even 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is in between. Remember this is 0 0.8 to 0 0.1.0. You know, it's 0 0.2, so that's the better approximation in between. Does it make sense, everyone? Yeah. Okay, so the next one, Kelly is not paying attention, and of course, some other friends. Negative 4 is 0 0.88. Okay, negative 4, 0 0.88. Negative 4, so I just pick maybe 0 0.8, which is this line. Uh, negative 3, even 0 0.88 is still 0 0.9, right? Negative 3 is 0 0.78, which is like 0 0.88, which is 0 0.8, somewhere here. Negative 2 is 0 0.5, which is in between. Negative 1 is negative 1, which is here. Uh, negative 0 0.5 is negative 7. Can we see that? Can we see that? Yes. So on the other side, so you still have exactly. 0 0.5 and 7. Can you see? What do you notice about this shape? It's there exactly the same. Yeah, it's like but symmetric it's along the y axis, right? Yanko, everything all right? Yeah. 2 and 0 0.5. Can you see that? Yeah. 3 and 0 0.78, which is like 0 0.8. 4 and 0 0.9, which is in between. 5 and 0 0.92 as well. So. Looks like gamma. So for this one, this is what we are saying. So it touches this part, then it just moves close and close, and it doesn't touch the wire. Something like that. Can't see that. Oh, <laughs> something like. <laughs> like <laughs> quiet, please. Uh, it's not a straight graph. It will never touch it. Oh. Did I miss any point out? No. No, okay. So, something like that. It's not a part. If I use a pencil, of course, I would have drawn a better one. Shh. Quiet, please. So, now, if you never touch, there will always be two paths to your inverse graph. Any question, Javi? Thank you. Now, on this grid, so we've just answered this question which says, on the grid, draw this graph. So this is the graph. Now, let's zoom out and look at the next question. Can we see that? Is it clear enough? Yes. yes. OK. So the next question says, on the grid, draw the graph of y equals minus x minus 1. So just pick any two points. When x is 0, what is y? Minus, minus 1. So I use maybe purple for that. When x is 0, y is minus 1 at this point. Then let's pick another one, say, when x is 2, what is y? Negative 3. Negative 3. When x is 2, y is negative 3. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Can I have a ruler? Just a OK, so we draw the line. Please focus, please, focus, please. Ooh. What's the problem? His name. And they call me. What's it called? The record called the paper. Yeah, they have the name. Yeah. He's, he's French. OK, so I have that. Please, there's no time. This is 316. I will appreciate the less talking, particularly if it is a distracting conversation. Thank you. All right, so we have that. Then the next thing is solve this equation. What do they mean by this equation, class? The interest of x. What x? Where what? Y equals y equals x. What is x? Look at the equation of the curve and the solution you are trying to find. So y is Okay, how about I write it out? This curve is y equals 1 minus 2 divided by x squared. The purple line is y equals minus x minus 1. What does this mean? 
where it intersects. Where the intersect. where what intersect? The two. The line the two. So don't say where it intersects. Mm -hmm. Where the curve and the line intersect. Mm -hmm. The left is your curve, right? Yeah. And the right one is the straight line. So when you equate them, you are telling us where the two shapes meet. Okay? And they have been kind enough to show you x is equal to just one value, telling you they only meet at the point, right? And this is the point where they meet, according to my own sketch. So if you join this here, I will trace it to the x-axis. Can you see that? So what does that look like? 0 0.8. Does this make sense? Now, the next page is where you need to really pay attention to. I know that you like to please yourself, but don't blame me when I please myself as well, Anson. Like, look at the next page, everybody. The equation this can be written in this form. Write down the values of P and Q. Can somebody advise what to do? You have to equate all of zero first. You have by to equate? Moving, by moving the stuff on the right side to the left. Yeah, that, that, we can do that, or we could do something before we, we do that. We make the fraction a whole number by multiplying oh. all of them by x squared. We multiply all of them by? x squared. x squared. So we can multiply all of them by x squared. So multiply by x squared, right? Now if you multiply by x squared, what do you get here? X squared. x squared minus 2 uh -huh. is equal to negative x cubed uh -huh. minus x squared. Now we do what Jamila is talking about. Bring everything to this side. And while you are doing that, arrange them in order. The cube, then the square, just like this format. Okay, so we do that. So x cubed comes first. Now positive when it crosses. Do you understand that? Yeah. The next thing will be plus x squared, then plus x squared. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. The minus 2 equals 0. So you get x cubed, 2x squared, minus 2 equals 0. So compare these two. What is p? 2 and minus 2. And minus 2. As simple as that. So being a three-point question, this will definitely be counted as one of them. OK? So you don't just assume and do whatever you like. Do you have to uh, multiply everything by x squared first, or can you do that when you... You can do that also. So what you are proposing is we move them first. If we move them first, we're going to have something like this. 1 minus 2x squared plus x plus 1, right? Yeah. So we can have, we can even collect the like terms if you want. So x, x first, plus 2 minus 2 over x squared equals 0, like that. Uh -huh. So now you multiply by? Uh, okay. I rearrange them in order uh, in order of x. Do you notice that? Yeah. This is x to power 1. Yeah. This is x to power 0. This term has x to power what? Negative, Negative 2. So I intentionally did that. So when I multiply by x squared, I get x cubed. 2x squared minus 2. Even 0 times x squared is still 0. So you can do any one, okay? Now the next question, the graph this cuts positive x-axis at A and B at this point, this graph. So let's go back to the graph. This one. Positive x-axis at A and B at 0 minus 2. 0 minus 2, wait, wait, what's that? Okay, okay. B is a point zero minus two. Okay. So at H, it's called x positive x at A. Let's see. This is your A. Can you see that? This point? Oh no no. Positive, positive x. x Apologies. Positive x is here. Can you see that? So what is that? A. Zero negative two. So x is equal to what? One point six. Something like that. Can you wake him up? 1.60. Quiet, please. So our A is 1.60. So we write it here. Now B is this point. 
on the grid, draw a straight line that passes through A and B. So B is 0 minus 2. X is 0, Y is minus 2. This point, can you see that? Yeah. So we are asked to draw a straight line that passes through A and B. So this is my B. What do you think this line is? It's tangent. It's a tangent to that part of the curve, right? Oh. It's a tangent to the curve at that point. Well, maybe they ask question of a tangent, I don't know. It's just observation, all right? Okay, so we just did that. Complete the statement. Oh my goodness. The straight line that passes through A and B is a tangent. 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 So the curve. At point what? X equals zero. At point x equals zero. Is it one point six? Yeah, one point six. Yes, as x is equal to one point six. Even though I never knew the next question is about tangent, but we are able to just come once. Sometimes you have to just think ahead, and the, what you have thought of could just be the solution to the next question. So you have to be open-minded. Okay. So and that is all about this question. How many points? The, count with me. Three. Three. Five. Eight. eight ten, ten. Eleven. eleven. Nine, Next page. Wow. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Wow. Eighteen Eighteen points. For one question. One simple question. Oh. And all you have to do is just behave in the examination room. <laughs> behave. <laughs> Okay, scribe class, class, listen. Now, this is another one. This is another one. I don't mind if we have to do the uh, exponential tomorrow, but this is another one I want us to look at. Scribe, please. Alright, give me the two missing values, calculator or not. It's not the same. Because this time around, it's not square. Just think the reason this is the same is this. Look up. This is square place. This is two square x squared, right? Whether x is positive or negative, you get the same value. So that's why. But well, this is not going to be the same. Yeah. Five is what? Nine. Nine. And eight is? Ten point five. Are you sure? Yes. <coughs> Please confirm that. <coughs> not that I don't trust those girls. I don't trust them. <coughs> All right, so let's plot this graph. So negative 10, negative 12. Please, I need everyone's attention. Negative 10, negative 12. So where is that? Here. OK? Negative 8, 10.5. In between, what is it? No, the first negative 12. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Negative 12 is at the bottom. Apologies. You see, this is why you need to pay attention in case I make mistake, you correct me. Thank you. All right, the next one, negative 8 and negative 10.5. So negative 10.5. Can we all do this, please? Negative 10.5 will be where? Between 10 and 12, what do we have? 11. 11. So if this is 11... Then 10.5 should be somewhere here. Agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so negative 8 and negative 10.5. So that's a better approximation. Agree? Yeah. No, that's 11. No, that's, 11. that's 11. So this is 11, so my 10.5 should be here. Sorry. So that's why you have to use pencil. Too. I'm using a pen so it can be easily seen. Uh, the next one, negative 5 is negative 9. Negative 5 is in between, and negative 9 is also in between, somewhere here. Okay? The next one is negative 2 and negative 12. Negative 2, it goes back again, negative 12. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Here. And negative 1.6, 14.1. How do I get my 1.6? How many lines do I count? Negative 1.6. Are you sure? Four. What does each of this represent? We have four. One is 0.4. One is 0.4. So 1.6 will be four of them, right? Yeah. 
So this is 1.6 and 14.1. So 14.1 is just approximately 14. Do you agree? Yeah. So this will be 8. Then on the other side, 1.6 and 14.1. So the positive 14.1, which is 14. Can you see this? Talk to me, please. Yes. Sir. So 1.6 is here. Remember, everything is 2. Oh, yeah. So there are five things and for two units, so each unit is 0.4 like she said. So that would be 4 to be 1.6. Alright? Is that clear? Yes. Okay, the next one is 2 and 12. 2 and 12, this is this one. The next is 5 and 9. 5 is in between 4 and 6. And 9 is in between 8 and 10. So it's going to be something like yeah. this. Do I get it right? Yeah. Okay? 8 and 10.5. It is on something here. 10.5 is one fourth of this. So this is half of it. Then this is one fourth. Something like the one fourth is here. Okay? Then 10 and 12 also. 10 and 12. So what do you notice? So this is like a mirror, right? Talk to me, people. We have four minutes. Uh, yeah. So it's like a mirror, isn't it? Yeah. So it comes like that. It goes back, okay, it goes back and you know, you could extend it or just leave it as that. So similarly, we have something here, oh no, no, we said it's here, right? I can't see it Oh, you can't see that? Can you see now? Yeah. And same place. Okay, so it's going to be something like this. It will never touch the y-axis. It could just extend and extend. It will never touch the y-axis. Okay, this is the best you can do. So let's see the question that followed. Look at the first question. Can you read that out loud? Division graph solve the equation f of x equals f of x equals eleven. What does that mean? What is f of x? Why? Why? Because they already they called it f of x here. So it means when this curve is 11, right? Mm -hmm. So what do I do? When y, is 11. When y equals 11. So what draw, does that mean when draw, y is 11? Draw a line, 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 line. line y is equal to 11. And see where it intersects. And see where it intersects. Good. So y is equal to 11 will be here. Agree? Agree? In between 10 and 12. No, no. No. You have to go up. No, I know, I know. I'm trying to get the point. Here. Thank you, anyway. So this is y equals 11. Do you agree? Agree. So we just write y equals 11 here. So they meet here. Quiet, please. We have a few minutes. They meet here. They meet at two points. Do we have space for two points? Yes. So they meet at two points. Let's bring this down. So this is one of them. So what is the first one? Everybody. 2.4 and 8.4. And 8 please quiet, please, please. 2.4, 8.4. Now look at this. K is a prime number. F of x equals K has no solution. K is a prime number. F of x equals K has no solution. What are they talking about? 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. K is a prime number, f of x equals k has no solution. Is there only one uh, answer? No. How no. many answers? Two. You can have seven. Oh, three. You can have five. Three. You can have three. Two. And two. Because you, if you draw the line, it will never touch. Has no solution means it doesn't touch it. Okay? So let's see what the question is. The question says, find the possible values of k. So class, what are the possible values of k? Two, three, five, five, and seven. Does it make sense? Yes. Tricky, but easy, right? <laughs> so I have one minute. Square, please. The gradient of the graph at this point is negative four. Write down the coordinates of other points on the graph, which the gradient is minus four. Now, at the point two, twelve. Look at the point two, twelve. This point, okay? Uh, so 
So which other point? It's not that one. Oh, okay. So the gradient to this graph here is negative four. So which other point on this graph can give you a gradient of negative?